in general, what mm -hmm. are people's perceptions of themselves? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, my dear. You look gorgeous today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. What are people's perceptions of themselves? Uh, on a scale of one to ten. On a scale of one to ten, yes. people's perceptions of themselves. Yes. I think most people don't have a very good impression of themselves. Mm. And I think we have been conditioned by the church and by our upraising. Yes. And... Learning to love yourself, I think, is one of the most difficult things we have to do in life. It is. And when someone gives you, pays you a compliment, sometimes it is hard to, to just say thank you. Yes. Because we don't believe it ourselves. But you took my compliment very well, indeed. Well, you are just wonderful. Yes. I kind of am. <laughs> so much. And so are you. <laughs> well, in, in a way, it is, it is a funny thing now that you brought it up. Uh, you give somebody a compliment. How often do they uh, almost resist it? They duck it or, oh gosh, or shucks, or, uh, or, or it, it brings up something in them, almost anger sometimes. It's very strange. I'd like to see a world where somebody can compliment you, say, my, you look young today, and instead of them giving you a lot of guff about it, they, they simply say, Absolutely, like Edith did. Absolutely. Because I'm living and I'm young. Yeah. I'd hook you two up. Uh, anyway. So, uh, so human's perception on a scale of 1 to 10, not so good. Not so good. Would you give it a 5? Uh, for everybody? Are you just, talking in, just in, myself? Yeah, in, in general. Everybody. I think probably a five. Five, okay. And I think there, you know, in Chambra, yeah, this is one of the we are learning to experience. Yes. And uh, and to accept that you know that we are beautiful people. Yeah. We are wonderful people. And it's it's that growing, that experiencing, over and over that helps us. And now the the same question, but. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do people perceive the world around them? On a scale of 1 to 10, is it more positive, more negative? I think it's more negative. It's sad, but yeah. I think, you know, all the things that are happening around us, how can we, you know, it's hard to see the light. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How does one learn? or experience trusting with themselves? Big one. If we can answer this, boy, we're going to graduate into another level. Yes. Uh, what, we need the microphone here. Okay. Acceptance. Acceptance, yes. I, I, I would agree, uh, and I think everybody here would, but you're telling a person on the street about acceptance. Now they're really confused. Trust and acceptance, two things that are very, very foreign. I totally agree with what you're saying, but how do we distill this? How do you get somebody to trust themselves? Self-love. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Self-love. Self-love. Self mm -hmm. Ah, now we've really hit on <laughs> one of the most <laughs> difficult things. So let's put underneath here acceptance, self-love. Yes, we all know that's, that's correct. You've all had some experiences with it, but that's the toughest thing a human will ever do. It's the toughest thing any angel in any of the realms will ever do. That's, that's the truly, ultimately, the experience of Earth is self-love, the most difficult thing. Acceptance. Just one at a time, don't they? Everybody's throwing this at me. Acceptance. Acceptance and acknowledgement. And acknowledgement. Yes. Which is an interesting thing in itself. How is one going to get acceptance or acknowledgement if they don't accept or acknowledge themselves? If you out there listening in, you've in here listening, if you have an acceptance issue, if you feel other people just don't accept me, they just don't understand me, it's because you don't accept or understand yourself. Did I hear somebody call out, oh crap? 
<laughs> yes, they, they want acceptance and acknowledgement. They're in this identity struggle to accept themselves. They try looking for it uh, all the time from others. They, they, they most never occurs to them to look at it from within. So they're looking for acceptance. Do my parents accept me? Do my co-workers accept me? Does my wife or my husband accept me? Do average people on the street accept me? So they're constantly looking for that. They're looking for acknowledgement or validation. Acknowledgement that they're doing a good job, but if they don't think they're doing a good job as a human, nobody else is going to think they're doing a good job. You see? <laughs> so so what, what is love? That's an interesting thing. I contend that the mass, mass consciousness belief uh, about love is generally kind of warped. Because love is generally associated with parents who abused you. Not everybody, but a lot, most, the vast majority, the extremely vast majority. <laughs> so they, how many of you had parents that says, um, I, I, I'm going to smack you now or I'm going to deprive you of something, but it's because I love you? And that sets up kind of an interesting energetic definition of love. How many online, I won't ask the people here, how many online are, have been divorced? More than once, more than twice. Oh, keep going. Okay, more than five times. <laughs> so you got married for love. Well, actually, you didn't at all. Uh, most of you did not get married for love. It was karma. You've been together before. You had things to work out and experience together. So you came back together. You met each other. Oh, I know you. You must be my soulmate. Oh, no, you've just been together before. You had stuff to work out. Maybe you could do it this lifetime. True love will never be found in another person until you find it in yourself. Never have a partnership with anyone else that's healthy and balanced until you have it with yourself. Then every relationship will be different. They won't be feeding. They won't be used uh, to balance your masculine or feminine side or balance whatever. You never select a partner again to complete something within yourself. So, and, and now, so I hear out there somebody saying, but what about love for my dog or my cat? What about that kind of love? You're getting close because pets are basically extensions of you, kind of. Not you directly, because then you wouldn't like the pet so much, but they're kind of like your energy in that pet. And so it's actually part of the step or process in learning to love yourself. If you can learn to love your animals, your pets, these blessed beings, you can take that now, that same thing, and learn to love yourself. Woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow. Uh, yes? I was going to say uh, self-love. Self-love. Because everything we've been talking about so far, you know, the anxiety, the, the second shoe dropping and all this stuff usually comes because of how we react to what other people are thinking. Absolutely. And because we make ourselves beholden to that. So personally, for me, I'm trying to understand the self-love and really embrace that because I think all these other things go away if I can truly yes. get to that. Very well said. Very clear. Thank you. And, and said very simply, absolutely self-love. Yeah, you've got double duty today. Microphone, oh, writing so on the fun. board. But self-love, I, you know, and, and actually we could just stop there and we could say that's really what it's about. And, and that's really, you save that part of the experience on this planet uh, and for your soul till the last. Uh, do everything else and then, oh, by the way, learning to love yourself. A lot of metaphysically oriented people will run at this point, at this point of self-love. They'd rather do anything else. They'd rather chant with crystals, sit in sweat lodges, whatever it happens to be, sit at the feet of gurus, anything other than self-love. Why is that? Doesn't it – just take a deep breath. Imagine you're an angel, an angelic being right now. Does that make sense? You hear that from the humans or see how they react? They run the other way when it says, Time to love yourself. They love the game too much. They love the game, absolutely. 
They love the game of distraction, but loving yourself really is about releasing a lot of old things. Really is learning to embrace yourself, like you say, learning to accept yourself. Loving yourself, what? What, what, what else? Why else is it so difficult? It's hard not to love yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Not to love yourself. Where did that come from? Religion. Religion. Uh, and anybody who wanted to control. Absolutely. Anyone who wanted to control, because uh, do unto others first. Uh, don't be so selfish. Uh, you know, love others, but never yourself. Is there any course that's taught in school? regular school, about loving yourself? No, because what? Some group would come up and say it's perverted. It's dirty. It's against the Bible. And more than anything, God's going to be really mad. God itself, it's the devil. Because only the devil would say to love yourself. Now people actually believe that. And they actually accept it. Yeah. But imagine, imagine a new energy school. Which I'd love to see. And when the children first start going there, the very first course is about loving yourself. When you love yourself, when you love yourself, you automatically are going to have compassion for others. Loving yourself is difficult because there's such a karma buildup. If you've been on this planet a lot of times, such a karma buildup. We talked about it before. That is difficult to just stop and say, no more. No more. It's difficult for even you, my dear friends, to say, I'm not that thought that just went through my head. I'm not what happened yesterday. Maybe you could say, okay, I'm not what, I, what, what happened 50 years ago, but, but it, you, you say, I, I just can't be irresponsible and say that wasn't me. Yes, you can. It's a defining point. It is one of the biggest points of separation when you say, no more. I am not on that karma path anymore. Yes? That sucks. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> How is your mood to whoever gets the microphone next? Yes. How's that mood? It's been wavering a lot the last Higher? two. It's been wavering a lot the last two, three weeks. Today, How's it right now? Today, Boom, today snapshot. it is a seven. Seven, good. What's the lowest it's been in the last two weeks? One. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how is your energy level? Um, right now it's an eight. Two weeks ago it was two. Okay, good. And finally, how is your sense of balance? Seven. And I'm going to tell you, two weeks ago it was about one. One. Actually, yes. it didn't exist a couple of weeks ago. I, yes. You and I also, late at night, arguing. Why do you argue with me? I'm just curious. Do I well, argue with you? Oh, I, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. A lot of it's because I want to be heard. You want to be mean, heard? I want to be heard and I need to hear myself. Interesting. I want to be heard by who? Me. Myself, oh. my, my soul, my spirit. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be being heard? Why would I be being heard? Yeah, why wouldn't your soul be hearing you? I think it's been a lot of years I've told you not what that not good enough. Who's telling you that? I think it was growing up, hearing from who's, the outside, and so telling, now it's coming back home. Who's telling you that? I must have picked it up and believed it for myself, and so now I'm shifting that into coming into do, my own home. Why do you do that? It's a good question. I know. I asked it. That's it. Got to be a good question. I am sorry. I, I was mistaken. I thought the tears, you know, were from over here, but they're over here. Actually, I think they're everywhere. Why would you? Why would anyone do that? Why would anyone? I mean, I know why, but I don't know why anyone would do that to themselves. It's not worth it. Uh, could I? 
Could we just talk privately here for a moment? Please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a game. It's, it's game. a rotten, game. stinking, addictive game. You, any of you, can get out of it in a moment like that. Any of you can stop telling yourself these less than beautiful things about yourself. At least go into and, and my energy level is low, my balance is low, and it's not. Uh, it's what you choose to believe. And I know you say, because you were screaming at me the other night, screaming, I can hear energetically, physically. Scream at yourself, if you know what I mean. Talk to yourself. Let yourself feel yourself. Don't scream at your soul. Don't scream at me. Talk to yourself. And then when you're screaming at me and wondering, saying, but I chose to be happy, abundant, I chose to be joyful, stop for a moment. Did you really? Or did you just say the words? Did you really, really choose it? Or are you just saying, yes, I want to be happy, yes, I want to be happy, but still let yourself fall into that trap of the same old patterns of self-abuse. Talk to yourself. Hear yourself. Okay? I've been working on that this week. Stop working on it. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> working on it. My God, I know beings, humans that have been working on things for 40, 50 lifetimes. I'm like, yeah, but you're just plowing the same old fields time and time again and not allowing anything to grow in them because you keep plowing them. <laughs> what do you enjoy about working at things? Just do it. It's a shift of consciousness. It is an – where's my book? I need that. It is – thank you – it is an act of consciousness. <laughs> now available at bookstores close to you. It is an act of consciousness. It's not working at it. It's not trying it. It's, I am. That's it. That's it. So many of you get involved in this morass of self-abuse. Oh, can I overcome the hurdles? Can I make it to the top of the mountain? Oh, the burdens I carry in my childhood. Shut up. <laughs> Boom. You just do it. But you know, you know, <laughs> there's a little product placement, uh, self-promotion that we have here. But you know, it's distraction. But you know, if you're still playing the game, there must be something in it that you're enjoying. It's that simple. Mm. I have had soon-to-be ascended masters, I'm so close to their, their uh, ascension, their realization, screaming at me, throwing things at me, which doesn't really matter because I'm not in physical form, so it <laughs> goes right through, <laughs> throwing things at me, denying the fact that they're still enjoying something. I contend that if you're in a game, you're still deriving something from it. You're still getting something from it. And when you're tired, you'll get out of the game. Not always easy. That's why I did my little sweetheart thing at the beginning here, kind of. But it's not always easy, but get out of that relationship. Get out of that old way of doing things. Get out of misery. You know, Miseryville is kind of overpopulated right now, and it's kind of dilapidated. You can move any time you want to Pleasantville. Get out of it. It's an act of consciousness. Okay. By the way, I meant to mention uh, – thank you for letting me – for letting us be so clear within. So I thought about calling it the Keiko series, uh, very seriously. Then I took a lot of deep breaths and said, but what's the essence? What are we really trying to do here? And then it struck me. Ready? To write on the next page. It struck me. And what this is about with Keiko and with love of self 
and with allowing and releasing and everything else we're doing with coming into the light body. This is about a very important word, charisma, charisma. And I like to call this the Charisma Series. Yeah. And charisma comes from, but we're going to spell it with a K. You can go ahead and write, no, write it like that first, Linda, and then underneath write it with a K instead of a C. Charisma comes from the Greek word charis. Charis meaning to give in grace. Give in grace. Graceful giving. When you really come to it, there, there's, by the way, there's a kind of in, in the English definition of charisma, oftentimes it's, you think of a charismatic person. And part of that is true. There, there is something called charisma. They, they don't know where it is. They can't seem to extract it. They can't turn it into a chemical formula. I'm sure after this afternoon somebody's going to come up with charisma pills uh, just <laughs> designed just for Chambra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I will. <laughs> but charisma, what, what is it? Well, you say it's a person who has um, a certain radiance, I guess, a certain personality, uh, political figures who have charisma, uh, using the standard definition, uh, can, can attract people. You've all met charismatic people. You're in their presence, and there's just something, well, charismatic about them. But here we're, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not just about uh, a shiny, happy personality. The charisma the, the, is the grace from within. The charisma is that natural, really authentic you, sans the personality that's not you, coming forth. It's the real you. It's the I am in expression. Now, there's going to be a tendency to run out of here and say, I'm going to go develop my charisma. I'm going to go get in touch. I'm going to act. Uh, That's what we should do, charisma activation sessions. I'm going to activate my charisma. Where's that water to throw, the bucket to throw? No. No. Charisma, it, it, it's there. It's already within you. It's already inside, just ready to come out. It's the authentic you, the one you keep asking yourself, about. You keep saying, well, am I being authentic? Well, no, actually you weren't. So back away so that your authenticity can come out, so that the real you can come out. You, Brother John, I'll pick on you since you gave me that big smile. Such, such um, an interesting personality development. But I look at you. I mean, I look at who you think you are. And I, la- I have to laugh a little, smile. It's not you, and you know that, and you struggle with it, just like all of you do, but I'm, I'm picking on Brother John here. And you say, but I have to keep working on myself, developing myself, making myself better, and then going out and searching for myself. Well, make me throw up. Not anymore. You don't need to do any of those. You don't need to do anything, John, uh, and ex-John, <laughs> former John. You don't need to do anything other than let that charisma come out. It's already there. You don't need to activate it. You don't have to water it. You don't have to do anything to it. And that's going to be the challenge. You're going to want to do something. You're going to say, your personality is going to say, well, shit, I've got to do something with my charisma. I, I, I need to develop it. I have to breathe into it. No, nothing other than letting it come through. So allowing was correct. And so the allowing series as well. But it's one of the things you do. Charisma is that, what you would call that light within you. But I don't even want to call it a light. Uh, Charisma is the I am in expression. And once you dust away, clear away all those other things, ancestral biology and and personality that's not yours, I, I cannot stress this enough. Your identification, your personality is not really you. It's really been cobbled together with a lot of bricks that have come from foreign lands and cobbled together uh, in some haphazard, interesting way. I guess you could say kind of creative, artistic way, but you're tired of it now. And I know that. And you know that. We all know that. Well, most of us know that. Charisma 
is the natural self coming forth. The interesting thing about a charisma, it's already there if you just let it come out. You're not going to be able to identify its attributes, its uh, all the different things. Did I not psychically send out a message for some coffee with cream? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I got it. <laughs> but in the meantime, I need you to write. Oh, no, no, get them. No. <laughs> Dear Linda, you could assign it to someone. <clears throat> so charisma. The important thing about charisma, and I, I'm a bit reluctant to even mention this because it's going to set up some expectations. And then we're going to forget about charisma, and then I'm going to have to do a charisma butt kicking session next time. <laughs> charisma is the yeah, yeah. charisma is the true attractant. The true attractant. There are books that have been written about law of attraction. Um, interesting, going in the right direction, but they tend to be very mental. Everybody starts thinking about what they want. <laughs> It doesn't work. It's not very effective. And then they get all depressed, and then they they feel bad about themselves, and then they identify with themselves. I'm not very effective at attracting things. But nobody likes me, and that's why, and I can't attract anything. No, you're just not really being very genuine about it. You're you're being very mental about it. Mental has little or no keiko, fire, passion. Uh, it's not authentic. Every time you think a thought, most of it really isn't yours, 90, 95% of it. When you think about something, it's not even yours, but yet you pretend it is, you act like it is, you act out like it is, it's not. So we're going we're gonna to strip all that, get down to what is yours. Your charisma doesn't mean you need to go out and be an extrovert. Doesn't mean you need to go walk down the street shaking everybody's hand, telling jokes in the grocery store. No, you look like an idiot if you do that. <laughs> Charisma is a natural attractant. It attracts energy naturally. It attracts people. Actually, it's interesting because Sam is not much of a talker. Doesn't say a lot of words, but doesn't need to. The words he says are clear and uh, he speaks them from himself, so he doesn't mumble them down here. When Sam speaks, there are a few words, but they're clear, and everybody listens. They're not just listening to the sound waves coming from his mouth. They're feeling his charisma, and he has a lot of it. Now, people will say, well, he's charismatic, or he's attractive because he's physically attractive, or because he's... Um, there's just something about him. He has a nice smile or nice eyes, but they're just trying to justify because they don't know how to identify. They don't know how to talk about this charisma, so they have to think of other things. He's charismatic because he's letting himself come out. And not all these other thoughts, and he's not polluted himself with a bunch of things that aren't his. In his biological puberty, he also went through the the uh, spiritual puberty of himself. He's got tons of charisma. Charisma, if you uh, get down to the real definition, it is the gift of grace that one gives to themselves first. And it's naturally given to others. Charisma is the authentic. It's the, it's the I am. It doesn't need personality. It doesn't need to identify itself. It doesn't need any... Charisma does not need plans and programs and goals. It doesn't. The human needs goals just to occupy themselves and to make themselves feel better about achieving a goal. The charisma doesn't need that. The charisma is you. And I know these are words right now that I'm speaking. They're just words, but I'm going to ask you now to feel into it. 